This is your host Danny and this is Myths and Legends from English Plus Podcast. Today we're going to talk about the third major Olympian god, Hades. Last time we talked about Poseidon and we talked about Zeus before him. Today we're going to focus on Hades, the third of the big three brothers. But before we do that, let me remind you that you can find more on the website. You can practice and check your understanding of what you're listening to in this episode. There's a link that will take you to a custom post I've created on my website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. Take the link, go to the website, practice what you're learning and have some fun. And there's also another link in the description that will take you to my Patreon page. Support me on Patreon to help me create more of this content that you love. And now, without further ado, let's talk about Hades. In Greek mythology, Hades was the god of the underworld, the kingdom of the dead. Although the name Hades is often used to indicate the underworld itself, it rightfully belongs only to the god whose kingdom was known as the land of Hades or house of Hades. Hades was the son of Cronus and Rhea, two of the Titans who once ruled the universe. The Titans had other children as well, the gods Zeus and Poseidon, and the goddesses Demeter, Hera, and Hestia. When Hades was born, Cronus swallowed him as he had swallowed his other children at birth. However, Zeus escaped this fate and he tricked Cronus into taking a potion that made him vomit out Hades and his siblings. Together, these gods and goddesses rebelled against the Titans and seized power from them. Each was given a special weapon or magic item by the Cyclops to help them win the battle. Hades was given a helmet that would allow him to become invisible. After gaining control of the universe, Hades, Poseidon, and Zeus drew lots to divide it among themselves. Zeus gained control of the sky, Poseidon took the sea, and Hades received the underworld. The kingdom of the dead was divided into two regions. At the very bottom lay Tartarus, a land of terrible blackness where the wicked suffered eternal torments. Among those imprisoned there were the Titans, who were guarded by giants with 100 arms. The other region of the underworld, Elysium, or the Elysian Fields, was a place where the souls of good and righteous people went after death. To reach Hades' kingdom, the dead had to cross the river Styx. A boatman named Charon ferried the dead across the river while the monstrous Cerberus, a multi-headed dog with a serpent's tail, guarded the entrance to the underworld to prevent anyone from leaving. Four other rivers flowed through the underworld. Acheron, River of Woe, Lethe, River of Forgetfulness, Cossetus, River of Wailing, and Phlegathon, River of Fire. Hades supervised the judgment and punishment of the dead, but did not torture them himself. That task was left to the Furies, the female spirits of justice and vengeance. Although portrayed as grim and unyielding, Hades was not considered evil or unjust. Now, let's talk about some major myths about Hades. Hades appears in very few myths. The best-known myth concerns his kidnapping of Persephone, daughter of Demeter, the goddess of fertility and the earth. Hades saw the beautiful Persephone while he was riding in a chariot on earth and fell in love with her. When Hades asked Zeus for permission to marry Persephone, Zeus told him that Demeter would never agree. However, Zeus did agree to help Hades seize her. One day, while picking flowers, Persephone reached for a fragrant blossom, and the earth opened up before her, Hades emerged in a chariot, grabbed Persephone, and carried her to the underworld. When Demeter discovered that her daughter was missing, her despair distracted her from her duties as a goddess of fertility and growth, and drought and devastation plagued the lands. After finally learning what had happened, she threatened to starve all mortals as punishment to Zeus and the other gods. Fearing the consequences of Demeter's anger, Zeus sent word to Hades that Persephone must be returned to her mother. Before letting her go, however, Hades gave Persephone a piece of fruit to eat. Persephone ate the fruit, not realizing that anyone who ate food in the kingdom of the dead must remain there. 
Zeus intervened again and arranged for Persephone to spend part of every year with her mother and part with Hades. During the growing and harvest season, she lived on Earth, but during the barren winter months she had to return to Hades' kingdom and reign there as queen of the underworld. Now, in some myths, they say that this is the reason why we have seasons. The time Persephone spends in the underworld, the earth goes barren and we have winter. And when Persephone comes back, we have spring and everything blossoms and we see nature at its best. So as you can see, apart from this myth, we don't have a lot of myths talking about Hades. And in essence, Hades was not as evil as some other gods and goddesses. But in ancient Greece, Hades was generally feared enough that his name was not often spoken out loud. Instead, the name Pluton, meaning giver of wealth, was used and understood as a more positive substitute. However, fear did not translate to worship. The ancient Greeks built no known temples to honor Hades. The Greeks' treatment of Hades reflects their attitude toward the afterlife. They did not view the afterlife as something glamorous, fun, or beautiful, but as something dark and frightening. Unhappiness and isolation are often associated with Hades in ancient Greek myths. Although he is a brother to Zeus and the other Olympian gods, he cannot reside on Mount Olympus as they do. He is separated from the land of the gods and the land of the living, and has no companion other than his part-time queen Persephone. So what about Hades in art, literature, and everyday life? In ancient art, Hades was often depicted with his queen Persephone or accompanied by his guardian hound Cerberus. He was usually shown holding a scepter. Although Hades was not as popular with later artists as many other gods were, depictions of the god were created by Rubens, Annibal Caracci, and the sculptor Bernini. The operetta Orpheus in the Underworld by composer Jack Offenbach in 1858 features Hades as a main character. Hades is also memorably voiced by James Woods in the 1997 animated Disney film Hercules. Hades lent his Roman name, Pluto, to the pet dog of Walt Disney's signature cartoon character, Mickey Mouse. In the realm of astronomy, Pluto is the name given to what was once referred to as the ninth and most distant planet in our solar system. However, in 2006, it was reclassified as a dwarf planet. And now we come to the final part of this episode, and that is the question based on the story that I told you about. What do you think the myth of Hades suggests about how ancient Greeks and Romans viewed the afterlife? And the big question, how does this compare with other, more modern views of the afterlife? With that question, I leave you with this story. I hope you learned things about Hades you didn't know about before. And don't forget, go to the website. The link is in the description and you will practice a little bit more. You will check your understanding of what we talked about and you will have some fun. And while you're there, you might check other content on the website, have some fun and learn other things as well. And don't forget to support me on Patreon. I'm counting on it because that is the only way this podcast can continue with your support. With that being said, this is your host, Danny. Thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. I will see you next time.